Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> we are continuing our series on travel with Rich Travels Richard Wolf. Actually, Richard, we've traveled together, haven't we? We have. Yeah, we went to the Philippines good together. Times, good times. That was an awesome trip. First time in the Philippines. This is the island of Gabilao, welcoming, welcoming me to uh, the island. It was, it was great. And I have to say, if you ever travel with Rich yourself, do not sit next to this guy right next to you because he will not let you sleep. He will mess with you, tickle your ears, keep me laughing the whole time. That's why I can't keep a straight face on this interview. Ah. So anyway, here we are continuing our series with travel advice. So I have some questions for you, Richard. <laughs> yeah, but one quick question for you. Do you like flying business class? I do like so flying business. Do you mind business. sitting next to me? Uh, no, no, I don't mind sitting okay. next to you. Yeah. I have fun. First class next time. First class, I like it, okay. So uh, a true question we get a lot of people, the convenience of dive gear and that. Do you travel with dive, your own personal dive gear or do you rent the gear when you get there? Yeah, most of the time I prefer to take my personal gear there's such a huge choice of lighter gear now, BCDs, fins, masks, wetsuits. I prefer the fit when I get to a location. On the rare occasion that I will run equipment now, I just feel more comfortable in my own gear. Yeah, and you know, you never know really what you're going to get. I happen to know that with the rental gear in a lot of locations, sometimes it's brand new, and sometimes it's way past its service date, and it's just so old, shouldn't, shouldn't be in play anymore. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, another question that people have, a lot of people travel themselves, their own personal trip, the couple going or the family going, and then some people do group trips. So what, what do you have to say about the differences between individual travel and then group trips? Yeah, I think, you know, it's obviously personal choice. It depends on the timing. There's advantages to all of them. I personally really enjoy a well put together group travel trip because it's worry-free. So you sign up, it's all-inclusive generally, you might have to pay for your alcoholic purchases and tips, but the group travel, but the biggest part of group travel is the social piece. So having the shared experience of diving and water adventuring and even for the non-divers to be able to go with that group. Sometimes the dates don't match up with a specific trip departure, so you can also do individual solo travel and then connect with people on your trip. And just because you're on a group trip, it doesn't mean you have to do every single thing with the whole group, right? Very true. You want to go take a nap, you go take a nap. If you don't want to eat dinner tonight with the whole group, you, you do it on your own. So you still can get, have your own private Absolutely. time and things like Plenty that. Of time for space. And our trips are set up that way, too. We offer activities for people to do if they want to, but they're not required, nor are they expected to do. Good idea. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what would you say the benefits are booking a dive trip through a dive shop? Well, again, it's that expertise. So what I'll say about utilizing travel experts and dive stores is get connected with a really, really good one. I hear a rumor that there's a really good one in Arvada, Colorado. <laughs> um, Maybe. <laughs> but definitely you want to do a little bit of research, ask around. But again, it's that that's just that joy of being able to ease of signing up for a trip and then having the enjoyment of traveling with the people, all the memories uh, after the trip as well. Yeah, we even have a post-trip party when we get back yeah. together and everybody's so happy to see each other. Pre-trip party, pre-trip post party, post party, party, and during the trip party. Right, right, right. Awesome. So the next thing, we get this, this question and it, it actually comes to you in two parts. So um, solo divers, when I say solo divers or single divers, I mean some people will slap, throw a backpack on and they'll go on a trip all by themselves. Mm -hmm. But then a very common request we get is somebody that might not have a dive buddy or they might be a single person but they want to go on a group trip so they have the interaction. So what advice would you give to solo divers? Again, check around but get connected if you're a solo diver and you're wanting to look for a dive buddy, get connected with a great dive organization uh, that's going to be able to match you up with those uh, with the other divers and, and that's very easy by just approaching going into the dive store asking questions uh, about how do you deal with solo divers, how do you deal with people that want to join the trip, and most great ones will say we'd love to have you join, and there's generally other like-minded people that need a buddy or want to pair up with somebody. And sometimes even the case if you want to have a single room, that can work, or if you want to pair up and save some, save, save some money, you can. a lot of dive stores will pair people up 
uh, for the trip uh, in the accommodation. So for that solo diver that is the strap on your backpack and just go all on a trip all by yourself, I mean, do you recommend it? Does it work? Is Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I mean, we're living in a world now where sometimes you can we do the group thing, but there's times where you're like, you know, I just want to go. I want to have the. I want to go when I feel like it. I want to get up when I feel like it. I want to go dive when I feel like it. And again, when you get to the destination, if you're working with a good dive shop. Um, they'll pair you up with somebody. Sometimes even the dive master, if you don't feel comfortable or don't want to dive with somebody that you don't know, a lot of times you can pair up and be dive buddies with the dive master or the person that's leading the trip. Yeah. You know, when we announce our trip, sometimes when we're, you know, looking somebody in the face and they're like, where are you going next? And I tell them about some place that's really far away, I get that blank stare and they're like, oh. And it's really the long distance travel, right? So what advice do you have for people to, to perhaps make that a much better experience? Yeah, so I think uh, for me, it's mindset. So what we found over the years uh, is that people, once they overcome and they try it once, and they'll go with the right mindset on the trip in terms of a longer distance flight, the benefit of the uh, long distance travel is just the dive experience. More marine life in the water. If you're going over into the Coral Triangle over in Southeast Asia, you're jumping in the water and it literally is like jumping into Disneyland or into just because of the biodiversity, the amount of fish in the water. Never had a single person come back from a trip saying, oh my gosh, I'll never do that again. It was too far to travel. So uh, they're generally going again and again. And from where we are in the United States, a lot of the better travel is a longer distance anyway. So if you're going to see that stuff, that's your that's Indeed your option. Indeed it is. You know, you can still have some fun in the Caribbean and places, depending on where you're living in the world, going to nearer destinations and having fun. But the, the longer distance travel for people not in South, that don't live in Southeast Asia is really phenomenal. Yeah. So here's a phenomenon that, it just mystifies me. I'm not sure. Maybe you can answer it for me, too, although we get this question a lot. When you go on a trip, how come you don't get jet lag when you go, but you always get jet lag when you come back? Yeah. Well, the rumor is, and there's been obviously tons of research studies done on this, and but the rumor is that when you're going over, you're excited, you're starting your vacation, there's a bit of an adrenaline rush, and you get over there, and you're not even thinking in your mind, oh my gosh, I'm jet lagged, because you wake up, you're gonna be going diving the next day. Uh, coming back, a lot of times, you're coming back to work, you're coming back to your routine again, and so again, I, th I believe it's a psychological mindset thing. So, man, I tell you, I suffer from jet lag. How, and we get that question all the time, do you sell a product, what do I take? Help me, help me understand and help them understand yeah. how, how not to experience jet lag. You know, so much. indeed, the whatever works for the individual is there, but we do see some practices that work generally for people. And one of the things about jet lag is being dehydrated. So you're in a dry environment, you're flying somewhere, you're transferring airports, you're sweating because you're moving. Stay very, very well hydrated. Uh, and then when you get to the destination and you arrive, try to set as quickly as you can to the new time zone. So if you're arriving in the morning, do your best to stay awake, get out in the sun, get some sunshine, go for a walk, maybe take a brief nap, but just not too long of a nap, and then I, you'll have a better chance of getting set uh, more quickly. So what would you say to those people? I, I have people give me advice and they say, oh, when I get home, I sleep as much as I can. I sleep all day long and then I don't feel like I need as much sleep. And then there's those other people that are like, I'm not going to go to sleep at all until my normal bedtime and I'm going to suffer all dang day. And then at bedtime, they're going, I'm going to get myself back on schedule as fast as possible. Neither one works for me. Right. Part of the human condition um, I'll even find sometimes I think one thing will work, I come back uh, and it doesn't work and then another time I'll try the same thing and it will work. Again, stay well hydrated. When you get back, try to allow maybe a day to reset before you're getting right back into all of your daily routines, whether it's work or getting back into extensive reading and stuff. Try to maybe have a reset day, one day if you can, when you come back to relax. And actually going over, we've also had people that have really enjoyed going in a day early to a faraway place and resting up a little bit, staying well hydrated, getting some rest before they start their diving. So hydration sounds like it's a big key. Hydration is definitely something. And that you don't mean champagne or beer. You yeah. mean water. Do the, do the champagne and the beer if it works for you, <laughs> but pile on the extra water because those are dehydrating or can be dehydrating the, the, the alcoholic adult beverages. Right, right. So what would you say... 
the biggest mistake most travelers make or or the most common mistake yeah well, you know that's a very 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 common question actually and uh i have two friends that i try to bring with me and a lot of times the mistake is people leave these friends at home do you know who those two friends are one is patience oh i was hoping it was me you wanted um, to bring me well, no. yeah. Next. Patience, patience. So definitely people will make the mistake of leaving and leaving their patients at home. So when you're traveling, I find the people are the happiest and have great experiences. Occasionally things will happen and the patient, patience is needed and adaptability. So being able to move quickly and change uh, as things uh, the same. So those are great bring, answers. Bring, bring those two friends along. Man, I see it start right at the airport a lot of times, right at the counter with the, the travel gal, you know, that's getting your tickets and people get so frustrated and angry and mad and blah, and that starts their trip off in I bring a negative. A good, I bring a good book with me now. I bring the noise canceling headphones. I bring, and I try to just have that mindset um, and I find when I do that, and the travelers that we bring around the world, the people that bring those two things with them, they're, they're happier with the travel. That's actually, that's a great answer, great answer. So the next thing I'm going to do, I want you guys to try at home as well. Uh, just to get to know Richard a little bit better, and I wanted to kind of test him out a little bit too. Uh, I have these kind of fun little uh, quizzes where I'm going to say two words, like a question, and you're going to answer with your favorite or your best answer. So you can try this at home as well. Okay? So I'm going to say two words, and then you say out loud, wherever you're at, which, uh, which is your favorite. Okay? So, deep or shallow? Deep. Deep. Okay. Air or nitrox? Air. Oh. That surprises the heck out of me. I'm learning something new about Richard. So I, I want to pause. Why air? So I've been diving for a long, long time. I'm one of those rare cases of people. I do use nitrox. So if we're in a situation where everybody's on nitrox and we're diving deeper and we need to be down for longer, uh, I will do nitrox. But I love the ease and simplicity of just having the air, not worried about the computer. Even when I use nitrox now, I'll leave it to the air setting to be way within the limits. But uh, I just find, you know, and I'm a frugal person, so increasingly, gratefully, they're including nitrox and in trips. But, uh, but I'd rather spend my $100, $200, $300, whatever it is, on adult beverages. Yeah, yeah, so it's like around eight bucks a tank. I have another friend of mine that I travel with. He won't do nitrox because he loves to feel exhausted. He loves the nap in the late afternoon. He loves to be tired, that, you know, that relaxation that it, you know, you I get from. I share that with him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, rice or noodles? Rice. Rice or noodles? So, rice. Last night you said noodles, <laughs> and then we had rice. Oh, no, yeah, well, yeah. now he likes the rice. You know, it's situational. I mean, <laughs> rice, noodles. I'm a pasta guy. I, I like rice and uh, both. No, I'm just teasing. So, vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry? Ooh, vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry? All the above. I'll um, he's cheating. Mixed together. <laughs> okay. So next, our series continues with diving the world and your toughest questions about world-class diving and the locations, the best dive destinations, best marine life in diving the world, and more. You know, series videos allows us to get a little deeper. And, uh, Terrell, are you staring at me? The camera's that way. We hope you've enjoyed this series. If you have a good idea for another one, let us know what it is and we'll get to it just as soon as we can. And if you hit that like button, you will uh, have Terrell as your best friend. <laughs> Make it a great day.